Welcome to Family Life Perspectives. This is Dr. Harry Broomfield, Director of Perspectives Counseling Centers, and your host this week on Family Life Perspectives. We'd like to invite you this week to tune in and pick up the podcasts that we're now offering on our website, perspectivesoftroy.com, because we've been fortunate to have Dr. William Guy, staff psychiatrist at Perspectives of Troy, in the studio this week, and we think the programming that he's offered this week <clears throat> is valuable, that we'd like you to go and to listen to the entire week. It's certainly worth your while. So we want to make that available to you. Again, perspectivesoftroy.com. But moving on to the recording at hand, um, Dr. Guy, welcome back, and we're glad that you're with us. You're talking to us this week about the guts of autism. Please uh, give us a brief summary and then take off in your thoughts today. This is rich in material here today. Well, what we, we've known for a long time that autism is an epigenetic disorder in that there is a genetic part uh, and there is an environmental part and both are necessary. Regarding the genetics, we mentioned last time that if you have identical twins and one develops autism, the chance that the other one will have it is 60%. If they're, if they're fraternal twins or brother and sister, then the chance that you're going to have another child with autism if you have one is 10%. So it's, it's definitely there's a gen genetic connection, yes. but there needs to be something else. What in the environment is pushing people over the edge? And, you know, again, they've got about 100 different genes that are associated with autism, but there's still this, 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 just this environmental factor. One environmental factor that makes, is making increasing amounts of sense is um, overgrowth of the gut bacteria, specifically the Clostridia species. Now, Clostridia, uh, some of these are very pathological, you know, like uh, botulinum, Clostridium botulinum, uh, and uh, uh, C Clostridium tetanus, um, then C. diff, which is a very, causes a very nasty gastroenteritis. Um, Clostridium produce neurotoxins as well as uh, a byproduct of sugar metabolism called HPHPA, or hydroxyphenyl hydroxypropionic acid. And this particular metabolite gets into the brain and gives you autism-like symptoms. It causes, uh, well, at least in rats, it makes the rats antisocial. They stop associating with each other. It makes them hyperactive. It gives them weird postures and uh, gives them a, a kind of mental retardation in that they're no longer able to figure out how to get around a maze. And so what we have is an animal model for autism that can be caused by propionic acid. And again, Propionic acid is something we see elevated in the bowels of people with both psychotic illnesses as well as, uh, as, well as autism. Again, not, not everybody with autism has it because of overgrowth of clostridium. That's not what we're saying here, but some do. Now, an when, alarming number do. An alarming number do, yes, yes. And see, the thing is, this is something that is treatable. Now, uh, in the original studies, they treated individuals with vancomycin, which is a strong, really strong antibiotic. And it was effective. It actually helped them uh, uh, de developmentally. It was, very, it was very good. Like six weeks of treatment resulted in six months of development, so it was really good. But when they stopped treatment with, with the antibiotic, the symptoms came back. Yes. Okay, and why did they come back? They killed all the bacteria with the vancomycin, so how could they come back? They came back because Clostridia reproduces with spores. When conditions are, hor har which are, are harsh, Clostridium lay eggs, if you will. These concrete eggs called spores. Now, I mean, I'm, I'm giving a, a mental picture, right, not really right. made of concrete, all right? Right, right? But these spores, nothing can kill them. You have to, like, irradiate them with Hiroshima levels of radiation to kill them. And so, obviously, there is nothing you can take that can completely obliterate Clostridium from your gut. It's not going to happen, okay? So that's why once the antibiotic goes through and cleans you out, and you have no more Clostridia bugs, a few weeks later, you've got Clostridia all over because those spores germinate and you've got this problem back again. So what's the solution then? Well, the reason that Clostridia don't result in overgrowth in normal populations is that they have normal flora, normal bacteria that keep the Clostridia population under control. Okay? 
And so that's kind of like if you have uh, a lot of people in Neighborhood Watch, then the thugs that live in one quadrant can't take over because right. Neighborhood Watch is on the prowl. And that's what your normal flora are like. Your normal bacteria are like the Neighborhood Watch. Now, there are two particular species of, of, of probiotics, if you will. These are organisms that are naturally in your bowel. Two particular species that are particularly effective at keeping the Clostridia population under control. One is Lactobacillus rhamnosus. Okay. Can you say that? Racto no, I cannot. You <laughs> Lactobacillus <ahead>. rhamnosus. Okay. <laughs> now, it takes a lot, though. It takes like 30, 30 colony forming units a day, which is a lot. It's like taking six capsules a day. So it's kind of expensive, but it works. The other, and I think the most practical, the one I would recommend, is Saccharomyces boulardii. Okay. Now, here, we just mm -hmm. went and we are not trying to sell anything. No, 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 no. No, we're no, trying no. to give information. So these, are, these are organisms that are present in your bowel. Yes. And they help you fight. Now, they, they are available as probiotics, but these are things that are in your gut right now. And when you have healthy populations, they keep the Clostridia population under right. control. And, and these are considered supplements yes, that are out yes, there exactly. in the pharmacy or They're wherever. All over, right? Or everywhere, right, yeah. Right. Now, the thing is, is that, so, well, why is it that some of these children develop these problems? Problems. Well, think about it. A large number and a very, very impressive number of children that come down with autism have a particular history. A lot of them, a lot of them had ear infections in those early years. Absolutely. And Childhood I, disorders. My stepson had that problem. Lots of ear infections, go to the doctor, get antibiotics, and then what happens? Fungal infections because the antibiotics, the, the antibiotics kill the bacteria, so the fun, fungi overpopulate. Go back and get antifungals, and then bacteria come back. Okay, because bacteria and fungi aren't like a teeter totter. Okay, right, they right, right. they fight each other off. And finally, after multiple rounds of antibiotics, we put some probiotic. We put a warm solution of probiotics. I think uh, used Saccharomyces used a warm solution, and it took care of the problem. After that, it didn't ha didn't come back again. But when you have these children at this young age with multiple infections, what happens is they get hit with these antibiotics, and that changes. Antibiotics kill the good bacteria, okay? Now, it does, they do get some of the bad guys, but remember, when you're talking about, um, when you're talking about these guys, when, you, when, you're, ta when you're talking uh, uh, about Clostridia, they lay spores. And no antibiotics kill those. And so you, you come and you're going after your ear infection and you kill all the good bacteria off. Right, right, right. And Clostridia are going, nah, 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 nah. We got spores. <laughs> so even if you kill me, my children will take over. And what happens when those kids hatch, they're, all the police are dead. Neighborhood watch has been wiped out. And right. they go and they start moving, moving territory. And now you've got a bigger population of hoods and thugs in right. your in your colon. Okay. Right. Right. And what now? If you have to, now now what happens if you get a really big dose of antibiotics and you don't go on probiotics? Is you're at risk for C. diff colitis, Clostridium difficile colitis. And that results in diarrhea, sometimes bloody, mucusy, foul smelling. I mean, not that. Stool is right, not, right, is that, right, but right. even worse than normal smelling. Right, okay, right, right. that C. diff colitis, which can be life threatening, by the way, that can that can kill you if, if if untreated, you can die. You will turn gray and die. Okay, but we're not talking about fulminant C. diff colitis in these children. We're talking about just a little bit bigger population than normal, so that these clusters, these spores germinate, and what do they do? They release that toxin HPHPA gets into the brain, and now uh, uh, th 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 this, this propionic acid it has the ability to get, get all the way into the nucleus of your neuron and turn genes on and off. And that may be, for some kids, the epigenetic switch that turns on those genes that then are involved in their disorder in their in their autism autism mm -hmm. symptomology yeah. exactly. exactly dr guy we need to get a we're late in the show here we need to get a word from our sponsor we come back perhaps you can give some closing thoughts for today's program we'll be right back welcome back to family life perspectives dr william guy and dr broomfield talking about the guts of autism dr guy we only have a couple minutes left mm -hmm. can you give us some closing thoughts on today's program well you know, we do, we don't know all the causes of every case of, of autism. Obviously, it's, it's a wide spectrum, isn't it? It very much is. It very much is. And but when we have now, now that we we seem to have what looks like a smoking gun for at least some children, 
Uh, so it's it's worth it's worth looking into. Uh, you know, I mean, certainly there are urine tests for HPHPA uh, that can be done, uh, or you can try if if. if if there is a suspicion of some changes early on in development, then when or or whenever you put your child on antibiotics, I would highly recommend using probiotics, because this is a recent change. The use of antibiotics is a very recent change for humans, and it, it may, if you take a look at the old and new incidents of this disorder, that the old you know before it was one in ten thousand. When a person is using antibiotics. The use of a probiotic mm -hmm. is a well accepted medical practice. Yes, yes, Absol yes it is. Yes, it and is. And so, if a physician um, perhaps overlooks the mentioning of taking a probiotic while on an antibiotic, that's okay for a patient to ask their physician. Yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. In, in medical school, most of the, when most of us, well, well, people my age at least, <laughs> when I was in medical school, nobody nobody recommended using a probiotic with an antibiotic. We loved antibiotics; they saved lives. Yes. Infectious disease killed so many people. A lot of people. In fact, if you were going to die before 30, it was because of infectious disease in the old days. That's what yes. it did. And so antibiotics were wonderful. Unfortunately, you know, uh, too much antibiotics can also result in death. Uh, a lot of people can develop C. diff if they don't have probiotics, and it's definitely a worthwhile practice. So regardless of whether our, 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 doc our doctor gives it to us or recommends it or not, we need to be our own best doctor and, and use, whenever we use antibiotics, probiotics are right there and we need to use them. And a patient, we're out of time here, Dr. Guy, it's just amazing how quickly it went today, but a patient can ask their physician about a probiotic and that will prompt that physician to, of course, give them direction, yes? Sure. All right. Can you be back with us tomorrow? Sure again. All righty. Until then.